So this is Method Behind the Madness. Hi, my name is Joe Vasquez. My name is Nick Creary Scher. And we're here as 23rd Archive Behind the Scenes. Today we're going to be talking about uh, a new property. Well, it's actually not a new property, but it's one we want to kind of convert into something new. It's called Crybaby Queer. It started out life as a Amazon exclusive. And by that, I mean, Amazon was the only people that would take it. Uh, and they take anything. So that doesn't say much. And then um, it went on to become a Webtoons. But it didn't really do well as a Webtoon. And uh, right now, it's a short story on the 23rd Archive. But we want to convert it into a comic scroll. We think it's got some really good ideas. And what we're going to do is you know, do the behind the scenes here and talk about that, so. I'm pretty sure uh, you have to pay Amazon to take your uh, take your product. Um, I, it was just a Kindle book and. Okay. Yeah, I mean. I don't know how Kindle works. There was, the print, there was a print version, like I bought the print version, but yeah, it's neither here nor there, but because I did that, no real publisher will touch it, so. Oh, is that how that works? Yeah, if you self-publish something, a publisher doesn't want it now. It's like it's tainted. It's 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 in some kind of legal difficult to to buy moment. So it's like they just don't want to deal with it. So if you self-published your work, go home and start over. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Well, I wonder if you can if you can make a certain like t very tweaked, just very slightly tweaked version, and then ask a publisher, hey, can you publish this? And it would be like the. Well, I, there's two problems to something edition. There's two problems with self-publishing. One, you do put it in kind of a legal, weird, who owns it, you know, who's going to claim they own it, that sort of thing. Two, it means that the publisher has a more difficult time marketing it because they can't, it's out there already. And three, you've proven that uh, it sucks if you didn't sell a shit ton. And I believe that all these problems are resolved if you sold a shit ton because maybe then you don't want it to go to a publisher or then it's worth it for a publisher. Well, yeah, that makes some sense. I don't know. There's probably a cutoff where you sold a bunch and it was enough that it was profitable, but not as big as a publisher could possibly make it. And then, I don't know. I would think if you if you did really well self-publishing, you why would you need a publisher? You know, you'd be making it, which is kind of where we are with Comic Scrolls. Is it, it's like we... If there was, if there's somebody that we can pitch to, and they say, "Hey, we'll get this out there, and it'll make you money, and it'll make us money," I'd be like, "Okay," but so we're in a position uh, where we're just trying to. If you're listening to this, you might not have ever heard of us. We're the famous Twenty Third Archive, the world's first comic scroll publisher. Yeah, we're doing uh, something new here, where we're trying to combine different forms of media um, that come from the idea of classic comics but kind of turn it on its head try it's to so new that i'm not offended that you've never heard of us i'm a little offended i think it's it should be something that catches on like wildfire sells like it should be viral yeah and i mean viral sometimes takes years like it, things can you talking to a guy who plays lotto thinking like this is a good investment <laughs> well i'm on robin hood trading cryptos so between the two of us, we have two brain cells to rub together that to make something decent. <laughs> All right. So the first thing we want to do is, uh, so we have a property. It's called Cry Baby Queer. So I guess what we want to do is tell you a little bit about the uh, concept of it, why it, why it was put together, and what we want to do with it. And, and then we're going to talk about, uh, I guess, we're going to go through the process of actually determining how what product we're going to make. And I think that's our first big step is to figure out what product it is. So just to kind of give it some background, Cry Baby Queer uh, is not an autobiography, but it has a lot of personal stuff in it. I, I pretty much wrote it as a kind of a catharsis uh, to some of the abuses I had when I was a kid. And now that's not to say that the story is 100% accurate. Please don't go after like bad people in it. Everybody's name has changed. But um, it's just to say that some of these stories are mine and some of them aren't. Some of them are from other people that I grew up with that um, that I listened to their stories and eventually wrote them down. So uh, this is a story about a kid 
who runs away from home, fleeing some sexual abuse and some physical abuse, uh, and then goes into the city where he kind of frying pan into the fire, uh, gets hooked up with this guy who's an older guy and who is basically kind of pimping the boys off. Um, he meets up with a whole crowd of uh, lost boys and... Um, yeah, I mean it's a it's a little bit of an allegory for um, uh, Charles Dickens, I guess, like a modern rainbow colored version, that kind of person. And uh, you know he's got he's running from a, a a dark past, and he's uh he's moving in into the future, which is uh, he crossed that golden threshold, and we are probably going to decide that this is a comic scroll since that seems to be the best way to express it. Um, and I think what we'll talk about next time is uh, exactly what kind of scroll. Are we going to do an audio-visual scroll where we link it to an audio story? Is it going to be an actual comic cartoon, or is it going to be some hybrid there? Be of? So you want to discuss that next episode? Yep, let's do that next time. All so right. I want to thank everybody for uh, you know staying in this long. My name is Joe Vasquez. And I'm Nick Creary Sure. Thanks for coming, y'all. And you can check us out at www. 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 And actually, you know, you can check us out at the twenty third archive. dot com. Oh, no, it's uh, just twenty third archive. There's no the. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. I'm bad at this. All right. So, it all you can out. check us out, out at two three rd archive. dot com. That's two three rd archive. dot com. Supported by listeners like you. People could be trying ten different URLs at the word. <laughs> There's a link down below. Links in the description. Also in the description are the notes for today's episode and a PDF that you should be able to uh, download. And it also includes the first episode. So you can read that. Um, and it's got, I think it's got illustrations, right? If not, they'll you'll see some. We'll put some in. All right. Thank you so much for uh, checking us out. Bye. Do you think the the interest comes of this story comes from like people who share this experience or people who know the area or like the teenagers? I think if you were there, you you know you might call me out on a few uh, BS moments, but historically, I, yeah, I think I think I'm I, I I did my best to be as accurate as I can, um, and you know I don't want to claim to be. Uh, this is this is not historical fiction. This is some of it's my own memory, some of it's from stories, some of it's from research. You know, I wish. I wish I could have just documented when I was, you know, there or as a kid, but uh, I just had to rely on my memories. I'll tell you one of the things was the um, sea lions, because I distinctly remember there being sea lions, but they didn't show up until after '87. Really? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I had to be careful with that one. So some a uh, friend of mine who had lived in the Castro was reading. He's like, Oh, they weren't there yet, honey. You need to you need to cut those out. So why why what made them like? Transfer. I did. I didn't know that that was like a very recent migration. I mean, thirty years ago, recent. <laughs> yeah, but still, like because I remember the scene. Like, why weren't they there two hundred years ago? Six hundred oh, years ago. I you didn't know? do that deep of research, but I'll get back to you on that. Uh, yeah, as a as a science nerd, um, that's interesting that that there's like. Like we, there are people alive today who are like, "Oh, there weren't any sea lions in SF." Oh well, so they they would come up and would hang out once in a while, but they weren't. There wasn't like a colony living there like there was all the way up through the nineties. Oh, so they learned that it was like a free any food, animal. Probably. Yeah, it was it was like free food. I mean, I I don't know. I didn't like I said I didn't do that much research. Just somebody called me out, and so I'm like, okay. So I I think I dialed them back towards the. If they're in there, then I maybe even moved the timeline up a little bit, but. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was we have the characters. We're starting out. We, you said Joey is our main so character in the first story. In the first chapter, all we have is Joey. Yeah, Joey, and we ins insinuate that something bad happened, and we have a in the art we have a face, but we don't put a name to that face. I think we. It's like there's right. So we have like a that that second character who comes in and becomes like a very integral part of the whole thing, but the nobody everyone everyone branches off of joey like there's it's exactly. never like you goes away you walk, from joey to do like a side thing yeah i wanted it so that you walk through joey's eyes to kind of view the world 
before the world starts to take shape of its own. Mm -hmm. Now, I did take some notes here. So if you are watching this, there should be a link below, and you can actually read chapter one and take your own notes um, and uh, read uh, about it. Um, but what I did note was, as the author, um, I had put in, I wanted to say that this was, there's a rainbow, that there's color hidden in this thing, right? So if you read this story, there's color themes in it. And so if you just read this first chapter, uh, these are the following colors that show up in this following sequence. Green, yellow, gold, white, red, gray, blue, blue-gray technically, pink, black, and brown. Power Rangers. It's, yeah, it's Power Rangers. Um, but uh, those are just color themes in there, and each of them has a theme that gets, I hopefully, on the road, either through the art or in the story. So, like, green and yellow are familiar things where he comes from. Mike has a green couch later on. He sees the green fields. Um, gold is the is the separation between the two worlds, between San Francisco and the world. He, he doesn't cross the Golden Gate Bridge, but he sees the Golden Gate Bridge, you know, and like, yeah, when he goes, he, when he goes forward, when he thinks he's going to kill himself, he's going to jump from the Golden Gate Bridge. The gold is the transition. Um, white is just kind of in there. I didn't really have a thing for that. Red is obviously, it's that anger, it's that hate. It's it, when he becomes red, when you start seeing the red, that's, that's bad. Um, gray and blue gray, they, they're kind of talking about the city. And then pink, pink is in there. Because pink is what he evolves into. And then um pink is like the future, kind of. Yeah, yeah. It's it, or a Illusion. truth, maybe. Maybe a truth. Mm. Maybe we yeah, and you know, we might just keep putting that out there as pink associated with the truth. So as we're I we are planning on maybe even rewriting some of these things to fit this conversation for the record, guys. Um, so I think pink might be just represent the truth in this story. Because he's he is gay, he doesn't want to admit it. He's he's out there hooking, and he's like, "That's just a job. It's not me. right, right, right." <laughs> um, it's, just a good it's not. It's not. Anything. And then black and brown is just it. That's that's the that's where he's going to end up if he's not careful. Mm. Death and shit. <laughs> uh, you know, you know what this sounds like. Um, this sounds like. It sounds like something, it sounds kind of like a teacher in school t telling the kids why this book is important. Like it sounds like one of those, one of those things where we're like, all right, we're going to break down the crucible. Does that mean we need to start over? <laughs> no, that means that this is iconic, that this is going to be. I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> the crucible it's was a good one. <laughs> I don't know about that, about it being iconic, but hey. If you think it's iconic, please spend a lot of money and fund our Kickstarters. Okay. <laughs> um, I always want to be more humble about these things than you do. You kind of you have a good swagger, man. I'll tell you that. I'm I. All my life, I have undersold everything, and I understand that there needs to be a bit of like confident salesy. Like not not to sell, but to like other people believe in things more when you're confident about them. And so if I'm like, yeah, it's just whatever. It's like, why then? Why 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 care? Well, okay. So well, this gets into the the, the whole meat and potatoes of this. W what is this story? Who's this story talking to? You've read I, it. You've read. You've. I think you've read more than just the first chapter. You've read quite a bit of it at this point. But like, what? Yeah. Who, who are we talking to? Are we talking to straight Karens from Nebraska? I think we're talking to. I love you, straight Karens. Please don't cancel me. Thank you. I think we're talking to probably young that. adults. I think this is definitely like it's got it. It can relate to young adults, but I think adults of any age can appreciate it. But who's the main? So when we talk about demographic. 
Sure. Anybody can buy a, an energy drink, right? Like anybody. Yeah. You could you could be 10 yeah. years old and it's inappropriate. You could be 90 years old and it's inappropriate, but technically you could buy an energy drink. But who is the main purchaser of energy drinks? Young adults. Mm -hmm. Probably more young males than females, I would guess. I don't I don't know. But so if you were going to spend your money on advertising and you had to choose between the kindergarten and the old folks home or the college campus, where are you going to get the biggest bang for your buck? So who is the biggest bang for our bucks? That is to say that part of being a, a publisher, part of being a writer and an artist is you got to pay the bills. So how are we going to pay the bills? Question one, who is even going to be interested in reading this? And, you know, you, it's easy to go, oh, it's the gay community. I don't but think I don't it's the gay community. I, I think the gay community is going to, I mean, it's kind of got an offensive title. Yeah, written by somebody who's gay. Like and it's and it's it's also something that's like this. The title is not just like, yeah, it's about some queer kid. It's like it's it's the title is about how he's treated. It's kind of like it's kind of like being like, yeah, I guess that's you know who I am. Bo Burnham does that with with some of his comedy where he like he says stuff that's like offensive, but it's like it's a reflection of what he's heard to him. It's not his. I know thought. it doesn't sound like it's a direct inspiration, but I know why the caged bird sings was kind of mm. in my mind at the time when I was trying to figure out what the title was. Like there's a truth in yeah. her in her sentence there. Yeah. And I'm not as clever as Maya Angelou in any way, shape, or form. But <laughs> at that, that point, that's we don't have to get that cocky. I am I she's beautiful, man. Yeah. I yeah. I there's a few you'll there's a few my Angelou um sentences in this in this that you like I don't I I can't I don't do her style or anything but like there's a she has kind of a a really thick descriptive thing that comes out every once in a while that, yeah. that I you know I admire her so it's it's not about being insensitive it's about being it's about how Joey feels like he's treated basically well, I think I think if I'd ask, what is the material trying to say? I think this material is trying to say that ultimately tolerance is not acceptance. That only through a true understanding of somebody else, not a walk through their shoes necessarily, but a walk beside them mm -hmm. is what it takes to really accept somebody. You have to kind of walk with Joey through this dark rainbow tunnel to really understand his position when he becomes an adult, why he might have the viewpoints he has or why he might, you know, be the person he is, is because you had to walk, you have to see what he saw. Yeah, I definitely believe that. And he, I'm kind of losing my train of thought, but he is kind of, I think he is sort of this, this is sort of his story that's, and I think that this kind of like ties back to like who the audience is, is like, it can be people who don't uh, associate with being queer or being like gay or, you know, anything of the sort, but it's even just understanding a queer story. The first time I submitted this out, um, I got, you know, you submit something as a as a novel and I didn't get any good responses. But one person, one um agent, and I don't I wish I would remember his name, but one agent did take the time to respond and called it hackneyed and stilted. I had to look it up. <laughs> what, what eclectic words. What old timey <laughs> words. Okay, so who's who's gonna read this? I think I think young adults. Woke twenty somethings. Um, I'm going to say sixteen to twenty five. Okay, so this is definitely a book that would be banned in Florida. Like, there's no question on that. Do they do that? Do they ban books? Yeah, they're banning books all over the country, man. I I don't want to be serious, but vote, please. <laughs> okay, look, yeah. Um, this I don't I don't think yeah you know a conservative high school library would not carry this this i mean yeah for the title alone i think it's a little 
edgy. And it, it, it doesn't hit, look, there's no graphic sexual depictions in here, but it is clear that this kid is, you know, being taken advantage of. That's not out of the question for. Oh, you know what? Let's talk about the trigger school. warning. So I put a trigger warning on the very first chapter. What mm -hmm. do you think? I mean, do we need that? I think we need it, but. Cry Baby Queer contains content about sexual abuse, child abuse, homophobia, and suicidal ideations. It is not our intent to glorify any of these topics or marginalize victims. If you have any experience with these topics, it can be a difficult read. If you need help, click here for a list of resources. We want you to know you are not alone. Seems really well said to me. Do you, I mean, I don't want somebody to, to open this book up and, and suddenly they're in that space i need them to be prepared if they're if they're if they're the person that's in this book they mm -hmm. need to be prepared you know that's i guess for the rest of you it's a 10 second read shut up you know i think that this should be a scroll slash audiobook like not an audiobook today but an audiobook when it's completed yeah i could see that you know what I'm saying? Like we we spend the next two three years putting Crybaby Queer out as these you know posters with the storytelling aspects uh, layered over them, but really ultimately it comes down to you know three or four years from now it's a it goes on to Audible. That's what I'd like to see. Actually, that that makes a lot of sense because it it's kind of like we could have a a landing page that sort of has the the audio. And then you have the scroll where you sort of like look through and like watch the, the progression of this thing. Who would and you want to read Crybaby Queer? What? Who would you want to have read Crybaby Queer? Oh, I have, I feel like I have someone in mind and I'm trying to like think of who is attached, attached to, to that vibe, that energy. Um, I'd want, I swear to God, just, it has nothing to do with like the, the time period, what we're going through right now. Like if you're listening to this today in, you know, 2023, this will make more sense than if you're listening to this in 2025, hopefully. Um, but, uh, I want a drag queen to read it. I think that would be cool. Like drag, drag queen story time all the way. Offend yeah. as many, um, of my relatives is. as I can. <laughs> as many Floridians <laughs> as possible. Just, yeah, you know, I just, I love the way they tell a story. Mm -hmm. They're not going to emphasize the things I want to emphasize, I'm sure, but that's still part of it, you know. I was thinking um, Neil Patrick Harris. He's not, a, I mean, he should be a drag queen, but he's not. No, but neither is anybody that I've seen in this story. I feel like RuPaul's a little busy. Yeah, but if we're talking about if it's not an, if 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 we can get anybody, so um, there's there's a lot of famous drag queens out there. We'll just we'll just have to start pushing it out. Hey, will you read our story? <laughs> I bet I bet one of them would, dude. Maybe so. That might be also part of our pitch. Is we have each chapter written by or um, recorded by uh, a different drag drag queen. That would be. That would be a really, that would be something. Okay. Now the question on that, that sounds great. Do we have the technical, technological and logistic capability to do that? So the thing is they would probably have to do it remotely unless we found drag queens in Sacramento, which we can, but. And are we paying them? Well, that's a weird thing because we can either be like, Hey, we want you to read this and do you want money for that? How much would like a rate be? You know, it sounds weird to be like, Oh, how much do you want to be paid to like do this? And they're like, uh, I don't know. You're the person pitching this or they'd be like, Oh, a thousand. And we'd okay, be like, well, oh. I don't have a thousand. Like, okay. <laughs> Just kidding. I would like a hundred bucks. <laughs> right. But do we want to pay a hundred dollars every chapter? I mean, barely enough to make any, like, they get paid more to show up at the club, man. Exactly. So I feel like. Well, we, I think we uh, like, have hey, more your inner drag queen, Nick. Well, you know, I had a, um, 
I was a drag baby and I had a drag mama for a little bit who was going to mentor me because I was thinking of, of trying it out. And um, I think I ended up getting pretty busy and then the pandemic happened and it was like completely. Oh man, really I want to see the, that's the brightest timeline, bro. But the rainbow timeline, we missed it. <clears throat> I think it's funny when you listen to like uh, college radio and I always know I'm listening to college radio immediately because the songs are more obscure, but then like the, the, the DJs come on and they're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so that, <laughs> but I'm like, who, the f who is this? <laughs> who am I listening to? Um, anyway. We're in, we're in Sacramento, California, so we have Dog and Joe. Those are our local DJs. Hey, I saw your DJ friend at uh, Concerts in the Park on Friday. Which, which for, I have a couple. <laughs> Which one's the one that we were talking about? Uh, depends on the possibly get us canceled story. What? <laughs> you need to be very specific. She had shorter <laughs> hair. What was that? She had like a shorter quaff of hair. Oh, Mickey. Yeah. yeah. I saw Mickey. Mickey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's totally down to work with us on this. Can she put our shit on the radio? Can she be like, well, Florida's got a new controversial book. <laughs> I know, right? Um, no, but she's she's very community oriented, so she she'd be a good resource. We should put a check on that. Um, she probably wants like five hundred bucks, though. Like, Ooh. yeah. So her or anybody, I mean, if you're not walking in the door with five hundred bucks, I don't think they're really going to want to listen to you. So that kind of leads me into, well, not leads me into, but just as a side note, part of the reason that we are doing this Kickstarter or that we were asking people. Hey, can you please help us fund this? Is so that we can walk in somewhere, anywhere, with five hundred dollars and say, "Can you do something?" And somebody will say yes. Instead of us being like, "Hmm, well, let's try this place." No, we probably should have some money to do that, or some money to pay this person. And it's like, where is this money coming from, man? Like, it's coming from crowdfunding. Yeah. So if you're listening to this um, and you have two bucks. Can we have one? <laughs> if not, it's fine. I, I don't. You know, if if you're out there and you're just like us, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> you know, like. But if you're like some rootin' tootin', big fancy, rich person that had really nothing better to do with your money, I will take it. <laughs> Gladly take your money. I'm not sure what you're doing there, but it's uh, interesting. I'm strutting. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Um, I think I feel we're like Dolly Parton when I do this. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to edit that part out or expand your drag queen persona. Your choice. I don't think I'm ready to express myself like that. You will. You it just need to find like a lot of. Well, I need to find the right dress. You're not wrong, but <laughs> I need um. It's a lot of energy output, and I am kind of with where I spend my energy these days. I know we're all we're all challenged with that right now. And all right, so I think we're, we're we hit all our bullet points, and I you know then some. So it sounds like uh, we should the, talk about like how we want to how is the what is the format of this thing? So yeah, scroll. yeah, I think we so right. yeah let's let's kind of summarize. So we know that this is probably going to be um, sixteen to thirty six, probably college ish. Um, young adults, gay community, uh, young adults. Um, we know uh, that what we're trying to do is tell a story about tolerance is not acceptance. You got to really get in there to to know that story. Walk in the shoes or at least walk next to the shoes. And we also know that there's some color themes in this. So that's going to be important when we talk about marketing and storytelling. Uh, our currently our main character is a um, is he's 15 right yeah he's 15 he's when the story but he's about to turn 16 he's at that everything's at that about to change moment in his life birthdays can be either the worst thing or the best thing if you are that kind of person and uh, you know he's got he's running from a a, a dark past and he's uh, he's moving in into the future which is uh, he crossed that golden threshold. And we are probably going to decide that this is a comic scroll since that seems to be the best way to express it. 
Um, and I think what we'll talk about next time is uh, exactly what kind of scroll. Are we going to do an audio visual scroll where we link it to an audio story? Is it going to be an actual comic cartoon or is it going to be some hybrid there? Be of? So you want to discuss that next episode? Yep, let's do that next time. All so right. I want to thank everybody for uh, you know staying in this long. My name is Joe Vasquez. And I'm Nick Creary Sure. Thanks for coming, y'all. And you can check us out at www. 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 And actually, no, you can check us out at the 23rdarchive.com. Oh, no, it's uh, just 23rd Archive. There's no the. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. I'm bad at this. All right. So it all you can out. check us out, out at 23rdarchive.com. That's 23rdarchive.com. Supported by listeners like you. People could be trying 10 different URLs at the <laughs> word. <laughs> There's a link down below. There's links in the description. Also in the description are the notes for today's episode and a PDF that you should be able to uh, download. And it also includes the first episode. So you can read that. Um, and it's got, I think it's got illustrations, right? If not, they'll you'll see some. We'll put some in. All right. Thank you so much for uh, checking us out. Bye.